Hello, I'm Galahad, and today I will be reviewing the Corsair K100 Optical Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. It is Corsair's pinnacle offering with 4000 Hz pulling, optical switches, double shot PBT keycaps, edge lighting, and more. Its goal in life is to take you to the next level by reducing overall latency while still looking classy AF and draining your bank account while at it. So let's get nerdy. At first, I had zero, count them, zero intentions of buying this keyboard, but then I made the mistake of laying hands on a store demo, and those dang optical key switches transformed my life. But it was sold out everywhere. In my fervent search, I came upon a hobo named Paul, who I almost had to do some unspeakable actions with. Thankfully, he was a kind soul and notified me of somewhere I could trade a kidney for one. Now, the keyboard that cost me a kidney lays on my desk as my main board, and I don't regret a thing. This is my story, and this is not a sponsored review. It all started several weeks ago. I was walking through the store when it's per key RGB backlighting with 44 zone three-sided RGB light edge was like, hey you, check out my shininess. And I was like, if you insist. It was bright, accurate, and the animations were super smooth. The keycaps sport a floating design that let a lot of light through with equal intensity and bounce off the black, adenized, brushed aluminum frame, which looks classy AF, making them appear even brighter than they actually are, kind of like yoga pants. The edge lighting is slightly angled, making it light up the desk and make the whole keyboard pop. This is an RGB nuts wet dream, as it's some of the best I've seen. The bottom of the board is made from high quality plastic with cable routing and four large rubber pads. The horizontal legs have two steps, which are itty bitty, which makes them almost useless. It also comes with a magnetic memory foam palm rest that I never use because I use it as a pillow instead. My wrist can just burn with the pain. Ouchie. Unfortunately, they have added the Corsair logo in the shape of a tag and it likes to bully me because I want to rip it off and burn it, but I can't because it's permanently attached. So it just sits there and eyeballs me and I hate it. So I placed it on the side of my desk in isolation to think about its actions. The 1.5 millimeter double shot PBT keycaps are uniform all the way around with clean professional font and are some of the best I've tried on a stock board. I like them a lot. It uses a standard bottom row, which means other keycap sets will be compatible, which is a score for you keycap nerds out there. For you nerds who are coming off another gaming keyboard with a non-standard bottom row, you'll find the control and space bar are smaller, which may lead you to making a bit more mistakes until you acclimate. It comes with two different switch options, the Cherry MX Speed Silver or the Corsair Optical Switch, which is probably the most generic name I've ever heard. Both are linear, giving a smooth feel throughout the entire action without any feedback. Back. The Cherry MX Speed Silver Switch is mechanical, meaning it can develop chatter and has a debounce delay. But that delay is less than a millisecond, making it one of the fastest switches on the market and where it got its moniker, Speed. It sports 100 million keystrokes, actuates at 1.2 millimeters with 3.2 millimeter total travel, and requires 45 grams to actuate. It's a super solid switch, but nowhere near as premium as the optical switches. Corsair's optical switch uses infrared light to register and is immune to chatter and has no debounce delay, which makes it Ricky Bobby fast and allows you to fully utilize the 4000 Hertz goodness. It resets immediately after lifting past the actuation point, making rapid key presses guaranteed to register. It has a rating of 150 million keystrokes, so good luck reaching end of life with that, with an actuation point of one millimeter, total travel of 3.2 millimeters, and requires 45 grams to actuate. If you're getting this keyboard, these are the switches to get as they are superior to the MX Silver Speed switches in every possible way. That's experience talking as I tried my best to convince myself that I don't need this keyboard and I could just use the MX speed switches on my Corsair K70 MK.2 SE, but it just wasn't the same as they weren't anywhere near as nice. These switches feel smoother, lighter, faster, and have a beautiful sound, which lead to a very satisfying experience, which obviously left a long lasting impression on me and is the main reason why I bought this keyboard and why I keep going back to it even when I try other keyboards. It may not be as transformative to you, however, with them being so light, it took me a while to acclimate to them for typing as if you barely 
barely brush another key, it will activate. And I've noticed that my words per minute do go down on this keyboard. So if you are looking at this keyboard strictly for typing, I'd pass and go with one that has a clicky or tactile switch as they are better for typing as you can feel the exact moment the key press is registered. I haven't tried Razer's Red Linear Optical V2 lube switches, so I don't know which is best there, but I can tell you that this keyboard collectively destroys anything that Razer has to offer in the same category. That's coming from someone who has mained Razer boards for a very long time, specifically the Razer Huntsman Elite and Razer Huntsman series in general. What's that, Paul? Like, dislike, and share this video if you're enjoying it? What? He said it. It was for selfish gain, too. As I said, if we make enough money at this YouTube thing, he can totally live in the pool house. So help make that dream come a reality. So the 4000 Hertz polling rate requires Corsair's Axon hyperprocessing technology. This microprocessor is a beast and natively supports 4000 Hertz hyperpolling and 4000 Hertz key scanning, which is good because if it had just one or the other, it would limit the overall response time to be the same as the competition. But with both, it allows the response time to be four times faster than other boards with full NKRO rollover and 100% anti-ghosting. For you tech geeks out there, that was a delicious sentence. According to Corsair, this is 1.5 milliseconds faster than other performance keyboards and 7.5 milliseconds faster than other gaming boards. I would imagine performance keyboards are the boards with optical switches and other gaming keyboards are those with mechanical switches. It also supports 20 layer RGB lighting. Goodness for all of that RGB get in my face. I don't know where I was going with that, to be completely honest with you. I was just waiting for my script to catch up, which is impressive. Last, it comes with eight megabytes of onboard storage where you can store up to 200 onboard profiles with custom macros, settings, RGB lighting layers, and 4,000 Hertz polling while not having IQ open or installed. Nice. But does 4,000 Hertz matter? Yes as anything that reduces latency and brings us closer to a one-to-one -one ratio of what our fingers are doing and what is happening on the screen is a good thing. Is there a noticeable difference? Yes. In general, I do notice a more crisp and quick feeling to it, but comparing it directly with a keyboard at 1000 Hertz, I mostly notice a moderate improvement in responsiveness and accuracy in very specific scenarios, such as strafing, during peaks, driving vehicles, or complex movement in competitive games, mostly after when I switch back to the device that is slower. As my character moves quicker, on the 4000 Hertz with each press while also moving less, which gives me finer granular control and therefore making movements more effective and less jittery. Some may argue that this is due to the 1.0 millimeter actuation point and then being optical switches, but I compared them directly with Glorious Panda switches, which are mechanical, Logitech Low Profile Clicky switches, which are also mechanical, Razer's Purple Optical switches, and MX Speed Silver switches, which I guess are also optical or mechanical and got the same results. I personally wouldn't upgrade on that feature alone as it gives a small advantage, if any, that most will probably not realize or won't realize until way after the fact that they've been using it for a long time and then moved to a different keyboard. However, I wonder if I would still notice it more at 240 hertz or 360 hertz. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments section below. I didn't experience any issues when just using the K100 at 4000 hertz, even with IQ up and running. However, the moment I added the Razer Viper AK at 8000 hertz in certain games, Games, I noticed my frames bottoming out or just completely going, they, they disappeared. They, they were hidden in the hills. They were just like, I'm out, guys. You're asking too much of me. I'm out of here. I was able to fix this issue by updating my USB drivers, motherboard firmware, turning HPET to false and closing out of IQ, as IQ was causing the most problems and the other updates just helped further stabilize. I think your usage will vary depending on A, your hardware, which is your CPU, GPU, etc. B, software slash firmware of said hardware and programs, and C, how optimized your setup is, as both the 4000 Hertz polling rate for keyboards and 8000 Hertz polling rate for mice is very new and certain things are not set up to fully support them in conjunction yet and still have issues at like 1000 Hertz. And with those becoming the norm in the years to come, I figured I'd mention that as I think support will slowly be rolling out for this. Just like the K95, it comes with six dedicated macro keys on the left side that you can pair to specific stream commands through Elgato Stream Deck software or to other things through IQ software, which is pretty neat. However, these do not work if you don't have IQ open, which is a bummer and super lame. Last, the keycaps are not as high quality as the rest of the keyboard and extends the length of the board even more, making it 
can take up a ton, a freaking ton of desk room. On the top of the keyboard going left to right, you have your controls such as the profile switching button, IQ control wheel, which I'll discuss later, windows lock button, mute key, metal volume wheel, and dedicated media keys. Everything but the media keys are kind of shiny, wobble, and have nearly no pre slash post travel with a nice crisp click. This wobble really takes away from them feeling premium and instead makes them look cheap, which isn't acceptable at this price point. The metal volume wheel doesn't wobble and is super smooth. Most will enjoy it. The media keys have a professional look with a nice crisp click and mild pre-travel and moderate post-travel. The lighting looks great and they are the best feeling, best looking, and most robust media keys I've ever used. I greatly enjoy them. Honest, gin, gin, I, I really, really do. Last, the deep black glass panel in the middle of the board could be mistaken for an OLED screen, but it's not, which is a missed opportunity as getting a mini version of their IQ Nexus or having the ability to upload your own logo or text would have been freaking epic and more personable. Instead, all it shows you is the caps lock, num lock, and or windows lock is on and the Corsair logo, which is boom. The IQ control wheel is a disappointment. <laughs> kind of like I am to my parents. It's supposed to be a multifunction scroll wheel that is fully programmable to perform custom actions in games and applications such as brightness, switching applications, zoom, trace jogging, and track select, which sounds freaking epic, but I haven't been able to find a use for this whatsoever as all of those things are redundant and already have shortcut keys. You can see which function you have selected based off the RGB color, which I think is stupid. They should have had a small screen there that allowed you to either write what it does in a single word or put a logo, or at the very least, give you a pop-up that says which one is currently activated. The wheel itself is huge and can't be missed, kind of like a giant mole on somebody's face. It requires moderate force, wobbles ever so slightly, and the center button wobbles a bunch and constantly makes me think I'm in the middle of an earthquake, only to realize that I'm fine and it's the only thing moving. I'm not the only one who has a QA problem with it, and that appears to be a main issue with just not being perfect. Granted, most of these issues are incredibly minor and not really all that, like, significant, but when you're charging top tier dollar for a product and, and using this as a main selling point, it just simply isn't acceptable. It comes with a USB 2.0 pass through. They didn't make it USB 3.0 due to technical reasons, but they do recommend plugging it into a USB 3.0 slot due to the 4,000 Hertz. Due to the shielding needed for the 4,000 Hertz, the USB pass through power needed for the RGB lighting, optical switches, and it being a Corsair board, the cable is huge, super stiff, and long. And I should have reworded that sentence because that does not sound good. I'm not the biggest fan. If they could figure out a way to make that detachable and more malleable, that would be awesome. I've mentioned IQ software a lot in this review. It's one of my favorites as I find it to be very powerful and intuitive. However, others disagree and say it's too complex. Once you figure out that everything, and I mean everything, is tiered and the same for every product, it will click and become super easy for you. Unfortunately, it's a resource hog because it monitors a bunch of stuff. It also isn't the friendliest software and likes to fist fight other programs for superiority, which can be frustrating for you. Last, I wish it had cloud saves and it just makes life easier when you wipe your computer or move it to a different computer, but we can't always get what we want. Moving on to the conclusion, I think the biggest thing that people will have to get over is the price as it comes in at an eye-watering $230, which for some upon first hearing will be like me and be like, that, quite frankly, is absurd and way too much for a wired keyboard. But after a lot of thought, I don't think it is. It has a crisp premium professional look with its black adenized brushed aluminum frame, USB 2.0 pass-through, six macro keys, the best dedicated media keys that I've ever tried, premium double shot PBT keycaps with professional font, a per key RGB and edge lighting with wonderful animations. On the bottom, I don't know where my fingers are at, so I'm just gonna stop that, okay? On the bottom, you have your cable routing, two stage feet, four large rubber pads, the memory foam magnetic wrist rest allows your palms to be happy while you type on this smooth linear optical switches, which have great sound, are immune to chatter, and have zero debounce delay. The Axon microprocessor supports full key rollover, 100% anti-ghosting, 4000 Hz hyperpolling, and key scanning, leading to a blistering fast 0.5 millisecond response time. Even though if I do the math, it's supposed to be 0.25, but whatever, that's what their marking material says, even if most of the time I don't notice it. I wish the black glass on the top of the 
the keyboard was cooler, that the wobbly keys weren't a thing, and that the IQ control wheel was more useful. Also, IQ in general can be a big bully, so I usually just keep it closed. With that said, if you break down the cost of each of those parts and try to find that independently, I don't think this to be all that bad of a deal. I still think a more competitive price would have been $200 to $210 instead of the $230, but now that I've spent the money and used it for a couple months, I can say that I find this keyboard to be simply stunning, and I love it. Out of all the other mainstream keyboards I have ever tried, this has to be the absolute best build quality, buttons, except the wobbly ones, you stupid, stupid wobbly ones, lighting, and aesthetics that I found in every category and is the best overall keyboard I have ever used. As stated in the beginning, I had zero intentions of buying this, but now that I have it, it's hard to give up. And I constantly put it back on my desk, even though it's freaking massive, which is the same reason why you shouldn't do crack. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share if you please. Amazon Associates link is in the description. I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. God bless and peace out.